Why do we procrastinate? We procrastinate because of fear. Uh, we often mask that fear, sometimes by uh, rejecting what we want to do, by saying, no, no, it's not for us, or perhaps we're happier amongst the troops than we are amongst the officers. So we often stop ourselves for reasons that, um, that are not genuine. In fact, underneath it all, it's our fears that prevent us making progress. And then we think about, well, why have we got fears? Well, at the root cause of that fear is actually low self-esteem. The key reason why we would develop these fears of making progress is because of low self-esteem. And it's that that's actually the, the, the key underlying reason why people procrastinate. Now, often, people will say that, oh, I've got a condition, I've perhaps got ADHD, or I've got Asperger's even, or executive dysfunction. They may have been diagnosed with these conditions. And what um, that can do is they, they, that can become a comfort blanket for them. So actually, while they may have these conditions or they may not, but actually they'll say, no, it's just the way I am. I procrastinate because that's just the way I am. In fact, it's not just the way you are. You have developed uh, procrastination out of fear and that fear, the root of that fear is low self-esteem. How do procrastinators think? Um, procrastinators tend to think in terms of all or nothing. There's a series of dilemmas that they face that are all or nothing. I must totally succeed at this. If not, I will totally fail. Therefore, I become haunted. If I, if I do des um, succeed at this, people would dislike me. So therefore, I must remain light and, and, and not make progress. So there's a whole series of, of dilemmas that uh, procrastinators face, of which they're, they're sort of 100% in one camp or 100% in the other. They can't um, think in terms of, let's just make progress, let's just make, let's just uh, move to the next step. It's all absolutely 100%. Another element of this is, is what they call deserve levels, in that procrastinators often think that they don't deserve better, they don't deserve to be in a better place. Somewhere in their past, and perhaps with childhood conditioning, they've had their deserve level levels set too low, so that they don't feel that they deserve success, and that can also stop them uh, procrastinating. So somewhere in the back of their mind there's either these, these very strong dilemmas that are all or nothing or they've set their deserve levels way too low and it's that that's causing them to procrastinate. How can we get over procrastination? Uh, well I th a key thing with uh, getting over procrastination is I think there's two key things. One is to take responsibility and two is to change your mindset. The first about taking responsibility is a lot of procrastinators have blame. They have blame within them. They're blaming other people, whether it's their parents or their bosses or their friends or perhaps siblings. They're blaming people for the position they're in. So they're not accepting responsibility for, the, for, the, for, for where they are and, and, where, and what's happened to them. So they're also waiting for someone to come and rescue them, if you like, whether it is their sibling or parent or whatever. They feel they owe them and they're waiting for someone to come and rescue them. And that person's not coming to rescue them and they need to therefore accept that that person's not coming to rescue them. No one's coming to rescue them. They have to take responsibility for themselves and for their own future. Now the second element is mindset as I say and mindset divides into two. There's a woman called Carol Dweck and she wrote a very good book on mindset and said you either have a fixed mindset or you have a growth mindset. If you have a fixed mindset you tend to think your uh, attributes, your intelligence etc is fixed and you spend half the time trying to um, trying to hide the fact perhaps you have limited attributes, limited intelligence, so you're trying to hide it so it puts you on a defensive. Every time you speak to somebody you're simply trying to either get over the fact that hey look I'm intelligent or get over the fact that hey look I think they might find me a bit thick and so you so you have a fixed mindset and you're very concerned by how you're being perceived. If you have a growth mindset then actually you realize that all, you have it all to learn. Everything is there to learn and, and anything you, anyone you speak to or anything you hear is, is stuff to learn. So you're, it's, it's going to help you grow. And it's that that I think can really help procrastinators move forward. One is take responsibility, and two, develop a growth mindset in which you have it all to learn. How can procrastinators therefore become motivated? Um, well, I think that they need to, um, they need to get a plan. 
actually one of the key issues that procrastinators have is they have a poor self-belief. We've already established that, that they have low self-esteem. Now we have to accept that that low self-esteem means they have poor self-belief. So they don't believe that if they try and do something, it will succeed. So actually what they can do is, is develop very strong plans and you develop faith in those plans. You don't have to have total faith that you can succeed. You actually develop a very strong plan and have, and have total faith that you can get to the next stage. You, put, you do a series of steps one two three four five the only thing you need total faith in is step one so develop a very strong pan make it as detailed as possible and develop the, a good strategy for working out how to achieve step one that's all you need to achieve so you don't need total faith you don't need total self-belief you need the self-belief enough to get you motivated to achieve step one and once you've achieved step one you then need to then look at step two but forget step two for the moment it's in the plan you've thought about it you know what the steps are focus on step one and that's how to to, to motivate yourself um, as a procrastinator how can we get started? Well, a key problem for procrastinators is getting started, is taking that first step. So how can we take that first step? Well, there's a series of things we can do, I think, that would really help us take that first step. First of all, I always say, love your workstation. When you, when you do something, you're gonna do it from a desk or a workbench or wherever, but you, should, you need to love that. It needs to be somewhere where you need to want to spend time, where you enjoy it, where, it, where you like its aspect, where you like what's on the wall. Also, it needs to be comfortable. It needs to have the seat set at the right place. And that also, you need the right equipment. So invest in the right equipment. This is an investment in your future. So invest in the right equipment. Don't just get the cheap stuff off eBay, get the good stuff. That's an investment that's saying, I'm committed to this. So, um, so, so first of all, love your workstation. Second of all, get the right equipment. Third, buy lots of stationery. I love stationery. I think stationery is really great stuff. Also, buy, buy lots of stationery, but particularly buy a diary, buy a day-to-day -day diary and write everything down. So a key element of this, of what you're doing, of your attack plan is being written down. Today I did this, today I did that. And so you've got a very strong workstation, you've got all the equipment you need, and you've got lots of stationery, including that diary, which is very important. Three other things. Once you've got that diary, a very good thing to do is at the top of each page, each day, write action of the day. Winston Churchill used to do this. He put action of the day at the top of each page and thought what was the one thing he was going to achieve that day? What was the, what was the key thing that had to be achieved that, that moved the, the, the program or the campaign or, or moved you forward? So action of the day is a key one. I think a second thing is to write a checklist. A checklist is very different to a to-do list. A to-do list includes everything that's in your life, like going, um, taking shirts to the laundry, like taking the dog to the vets. Um, but a checklist is for a particular project and it will list the key things that need to be done to get your project to um, the first step that we talked about. So that step one that we talked about has a series of actions that need to, be ta that need to take place. That checklist has that series of actions and you tick them off. And the third thing is focus. Have a laser-like focus. Multitasking is the enemy of making progress. If you multitask, you'll have too much to do. It will completely overwhelm you. So you need a laser-like focus on that one step. We talked about the project. We talked about the steps. We'll have a laser-like focus on that step. That What you will focus on will come about. It will happen. So absolutely focus on it.